I found this on AliExpress quite a while ago, actually. It's probably been about a year since I've bought it. I didn't really know what to do with it because the listing came with zero instruction. So I kind of just put it off to the side for like nine-ish months. And then about three months ago, I came across a YouTube video or a post or something where I saw something similar to this. And I was like, I wonder if I could use the same steps for that project on this thing. And I'm pretty sure this is just a different clone version of the same project because all this is is a Raspberry Pi Pico on a board that is shaped like an N64 cartridge. And then I still didn't end up doing anything with it for, well, however many months until now, because I was saving it as a way to save or kind of save one of the 100 cartridges from my N64 video that I did very recently. And spoiler alert for that video, we'll give you a second to click away if you haven't watched it yet. Okay, I was going to copy like whatever game file it was onto this because this is a flash cart, but it is a single game flash cart. It's not like an EverDrive or anything like that. You can put one N64 game on here. You can swap it out. It's rewritable as far as I know, but you're only going to ever have one game on here. So it's not a bad way to keep your game alive if your board is dead. Like if the pins are super worn out and it's just not being read easily, if you can manage to back up your file so it's all legal, you know, it's on like this. This is also just I just broke this. I just grabbed it like by here and now this capacitor is ripped off. So I need to take it apart, resolder that down. It also has one of these uh, switches broken. But anyways, we're going to put a game that I've already got backed up onto here. But yeah, uh, spoiler alert, none of the games ended up being broken. They all worked just fine after a bit of cleaning. So didn't end up using this in the video. I thought about mentioning it. I'm like, nah, I'll just save it for a separate second channel video. And here we are. All that yapping aside, we've got the board. I don't remember how much it costs. I will throw up the listing if it's even still up. And it came just like this in like a anti-static bag. No instructions, not even a QR code. And it was made in December of 2023. Cool. But yeah, I ended up finding just this file on like Thingiverse or whatever for an N64 replacement cartridge. I don't have like any spare metal pieces to use with this, but I've got the dust protector and I've got the two halves of the shell and I cleaned up the print a little bit, removed the supports. Here we are. I don't have a label for it yet. I think I'm going to be too lazy to put a label on it anyways, but I have tested it fits and everything, but we need the USB-C port accessible anyways. I'll try to have everything linked down below. If I forget something, please kindly remind me. Anyways, that's enough yapping. Let's do some doing and go over to the monitor. Over here, you can see this is the original creator, K Beckman, made the Pico Kart 64. It was last updated on Halloween of 2024. So I think we will flash that right now so we can click here, get the NTSC bit because I'm in America. And then I'm going to plug it in with the USB-C cable while holding the boot select. And then this is going to pop up here. I'm just going to drag and drop that file we just downloaded. Boom. It will copy itself. For some reason, it's delayed and then it should eject itself. Nothing out of the ordinary for a Pico project. Then we're going to go back to the home page of this project. Scroll all the way down because we're done with all the assembly and stuff. I didn't actually assemble it. I just bought it pre-assembled. And then we can go to this website to guide us through the steps of programming, blah, 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 blah. The Raspberry Pi Pico it only holds two megabytes, so we got to keep it under two megabytes. OK, so I'm going to drag and drop my file in here. I 100 percent totally, definitely legally obtained this ROM. I publicly do not condone piracy. Legal mumbo jumbo out of the way. I'm going to drag and drop my legit copy of Conker's Bad Fur Day, and we are going to build the UF2. Oh, wait, 
What did I put on there then? It asked if I wanted to wait several times and then I was still trying to read the instructions and then it said it was going to be too big and now it's in the downloads folder and it's 127 megabytes. What the? Okay. Anyways, has to be in the Z64 format, not the V. Okay. Read the instructions before you do anything. That's the smart way to go. I'm confused because I put the UF2 file in there, but then I'm just going to overwrite it with this. I'm confused. Okay, let's just try it with one that is Z64. Okay, so it will show. Maybe, I'll, you know what? I'll just make a portal. I'll just do it with portal because I think that'd be cool to actually have a physical copy. I have it on my flash cart, but I don't have like a physical copy for obvious reasons. But let's build the UF2, see what happens there. But even then, our build is under, is way over two megabytes. So I'm a little confused because he does say, he does say that it's too big. Okay. I, I first want to try it with Conker's Bad for a day. So do the same thing with boot select. And then I'm just going to drag and drop that UF2 in there. If it works, great. If it doesn't, oh well. This one will take a little bit of time because it is 127 megabytes. I'm wondering if this is like a flash chip, but I doubt it. I feel like that's not the right kind of chip for that. I don't know what that chip does. So we'll just let this go and I'll come back. Okay, that took a really long time, but I'm going to remove that. It didn't automatically eject it, so I'm a little confused, but we can go ahead and put our N64 cartridge together, which is a little something like this, I think. And we do it by this. And I will say for this project, if you use this exact board that I get for whatever reason, uh, I did have to chop a bit of this thing off is it was a little too tall because it hits right on the pico but i just flush cut a little bit of it off and it's not a big deal okay i need to have this flip the other way when the pico is facing down the smaller end is on the left and then all of that clips in perfectly and then we can take the two halves and clip them together and honestly the 3d print clips together pretty well on its own there are screw posts for the two Phillips screws and the two game bit screws you, that they're meant to be like M2 screws or whatever it is. It says in the description of the print file, but I don't have that stuff. And I was just going to temporarily put it together like this. But honestly, it holds together well enough with tension. I, it doesn't bother me right now. So especially because I didn't make a cutout for the USB-C port or a way to press the boot select button if I want to change the game in the future. So yeah, that's why I did it like this. Let's grab our N64 and I was playing Super Mario 64 a little bit because I was bored. And I'm just going to drop that in there. Also, if you wanna buy this very HDMI modded N64 from this video or in a bunch of other colors, retroremaster.com, it's my website. I sell them pre-modded, they're pretty cool. I sell all sorts of things like Game Cubes and Game Boys that are all modded. Check it out. Link in the description. Fits in perfectly. Turn it on and we're getting no signal. Absolutely no signal. Okay, let's uh, try this again. Let's just do it the proper way with uh, a ROM that will actually work with it according to the GitHub. So same thing, I'm just going to boot select and plug it in, let go, drop in portal.uf2. It's still over two megabytes. It's 21.3 megabyte, but I don't know. <laughs> I guess I can keep trying to make files that might get under two megabytes. I picked one of the smallest file size games that I have, which was a four megabyte game. I put it in the website and it still comes out as even bigger than the original. So I, I don't know, maybe he meant to say 20 megabytes. I don't know. I don't understand how I'm supposed to do this if none of these games are gonna be small enough. I don't even know if there's actually a two megabyte or less N64 game. So like, what is this for if that is the requirement? I don't know, I'm gonna dig a little bit more while it's copying. I wanna make sure that this N64 still works. Oh my God. It wasn't outputting the TV. <laughs> okay. 
Oh my gosh. Today's just been one of those days, you know? I, I spent the past 30 minutes trying to get this to show up and uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day, nor Wheel of Fortune, nor Portal, nor even the test ROM would work. Why? Because for it was just the angle of the HDMI because the stupid mat. And so it just wasn't outputting the TV period. Uh, but now, sorry for the crap in the way, but uh, the test ROM is up and something is not working. It said failed. I, I don't care. What I want is to get this to work. So I'm going to do this again. And I'm going to try it with Wheel of Fortune because it'll go faster. If I can get Wheel of Fortune to work, I'll try the other games. But I, I'm still like, I don't think it's going to work because they're like 8 and 20 megabyte files and it says max of 2. So we'll see. And I'll know for sure if Wheel of Fortune doesn't work that the rest of them won't. But boy, oh boy, is it slow to transfer. Do, 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 do. Wrong show. I mean, I could put Jeopardy. It's the same file size. So I was just watching Wheel of Fortune last night. Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. But we're done here. Okay. Take this out. For the love of God. Work, please. Power on. Hey. We got Wheel of Fortune. And it's this thing. Look at that. Woo. Okay. Now I got to try Conquer's Bad Fur Day. And then I might. I think I might end it with like Portal being on here. Because I think that's just cool to have Portal on here. On a real physical cartridge. I will see you guys in 127 megabytes. So I just finished copying over Conquer's Bad Fur Day and it's still just showing the, like it didn't auto exit it. So I, I don't think this is gonna work. So I'll plug it in here and it's still Wheel of Fortune. Okay, interesting that it lets me put it on there though. Okay, let's try Portal again before we wrap things up. I'm just now realizing I didn't remove the, the stream cam anyways. This is done. We've got Portal in here. Let's plug her in and hey, look at that. Portal's actually working. Look, we've got that in there. We've got my controller. We're in Portal. It's muted right now, but yes, Portal is actually working in here. Pretty darn cool. So there is a chance that this will work with any size game because this was definitely over the two megabyte file limit i mean all of them are but maybe he meant two gigs but i don't know i don't know enough about the raspberry pi i should know more because i work with it so often but i will turn this off and i will fully put it back in oh once i put this back together fully now you don't want to work at the last minute here there we go and clip back together no screws needed so I'll plug it in one more time just to make sure with the cart shell. Yep, it still works just fine. I'm not going to get out the camera so you can see this. But that's it for this video. I just want to talk about this. This shouldn't have taken me an hour to record because this was probably a three minute video. But everything should hopefully be in the description. Hopefully you learn from my mistakes and actually just read the instructions like a normal human being and make sure that you're not bending your HDMI cable when you're trying to plug it into the TV.